On 5 September 2018, a fire broke out on the 23rd floor of the Bank of Lisbon building. That fire raged on for three days and claimed the lives of three firefighters. Initial assessments discovered that the building was unfit and on a brink of collapse. But it's been three years since the tragedy and we still don't know exactly what went wrong. Since the incident, we've had memorials and the demolition project of the building that cost the city over 100 million rand. Four reports into the blaze remain unreleased to the public, with the families of the victims unable to move on. It looks like the life of those firefighters doesn't matter to the government. If it mattered, they would have at least called us and give us what we need, just a report. We don't need anything else, but just a report to know what really transpired. And then from there we can study it and then think of the way forward. For now, it's doomed and gloomed. This is Robert Moropana, father of Spiwe Moropana. While Katutselo Mwedi and Mduduzi Ndlovu, the other two fallen firefighters, were reported to have died of smoke inhalation, Moropana died after falling from the 23rd floor. Standing in what was left of the Bank of Lisbon building, an abandoned hole in the city, Robert Moropana still feels the painful loss of his son. He was a good boy. Someone who doesn't hold any grudges. Even if I may have an enemy, to him is not his enemy. And then he was a very someone with a soft spot for other people. And then I see his children suffering because they won't enjoy that love which he would have given to them. As a grandparent, you go and see your grandchildren, but you still feel that they need that fatherly love which they're going to miss for the rest of their lives i really feel sorry for them but it's how life goes for robert moropana it has been frustrating not having the answers to why his 28 year old son died you know the people in authority they take us for granted then you phone this one they will tell you hey, we will come back to you and they will never come back to you it's three years down the line uh, I don't know how many phone calls I made to EMS, the, the mayor's office. The city of Johannesburg's mayor, Jolly D. Matongo, said that they had received one report by an external investigator and shared it with the families. Gauteng Premier David Makura has promised that all four reports in the fire will be completed and released by the end of September. Matongo agrees that all the reports should have been completed and released sooner, but said as a city they did their part with their report. With the insights provided and the recommendations that have been tabled in that report, we have done all that we are supposed to do. We are ready for any other incident, but it would be important for us to get sight of the other reports so that if there are things that the investigators commissioned by the city could not pick up, but they were picked up by either the Labour Department or the Department of Infrastructure in the province and any other role player, those things uh, could they should then be brought to our attention so that we plan properly uh, ahead of any other disaster. From the one report, Matongo said they fixed issues so that they could attend to any fire without the same problems faced in the Lisbon blaze. Matongo said they procured two-way communication radios and at least four fire engines that were lacking on that fateful day three years ago. With the issue of command and control, they are in the process of dealing with it. We have appointed uh, uh, officers on the ground, uh, properly trained them and so on, so that to ensure that when people attend to the scene, uh, there are uh, certain people that need to be held accountable for the operation itself. But Workers' Union de Mausa said they were still struggling to get enough resources to execute their duties. That is absolutely rubbish. She's talking rubbish. I'm sorry to say that because up, up until today, we have nothing, nothing that has been improved, improved since of, after that incident. 
The demolition of the Bank of Lisbon building has also raised questions. Because we feel that it, 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 it creates some impression that they were destroying the evidence. Because how can you destroy a building if you are not yet finished with your investigation? You know, they, they, have, a, they have a lot a lot to explain, but now nobody is taking them for accountability. Remember, it's, politi it's politi political games that are being played at the life of, of the firefighters. This one was a nightmare to them. That's why they have to, to take it out of their sight. There's a lot. You can count up to 20-something buildings which need to be demolished if they, if they really care. But they won't be. Maybe another firefighter has to die to, from those buildings before they get demolished. I don't know. CEO of Fire Ops SA, a privately owned fire brigade, Weinand Engelbrecht, said there were at least 50 buildings in the inner city, like the Bank of Lisbon, that are in the same state. And should a similar incident happen again, the same negative result will follow. What we actually need is a massive, massive, massive wake-up call. We need a council that actually cares about what's going on. A council that actually will clamp down, shut these buildings down, chase the people out and force the building owners to bring their buildings up to standard or demolish then all of them. Why are they standing? Why do we have buildings that have shacks in the basements and in the stairwells? All the fire systems are stripped out. On the day of the Lisbon fire, Engelbrecht said he had two of his firefighters at the scene and found that there was no incident commander to report to. We uh, spent a whole lot of time after the fire in the building and we came to certain conclusions. And one of the conclusions was that the water was so badly compromised in that building, the pipes that were cut out from the basement to the first and second floor that the firemen just simply couldn't get water on the, on the higher floors. Engelbrecht shared pictures with Eyewitness News of the pipes that were cut off. These pipes go into the building so that should a fire occur, firefighters can plug their hoses into the hydro in any stairwell. From the outside, just looking in on the department, we know they still don't have the equipment they require. We know that they still haven't done the specialist training that they require. It's not at grassroots that we have a problem, we have a problem from the top. They need to get training, they need to be developed into high-rise firefighters and they need to be given the equipment and the apparatus to do it.